artificial intelligence is changing the game in the world of cybersecurity. Cisco this week introduced a new lineup of security suites for the modern era at its annual partner summit. Less than two months after announcing it would be acquiring tech firm Splunk in a major $28 billion agreement. The latest deal amplifying Cisco's investment in AI and digital security. I'm here with Cisco chairman and CEO Chuck Robbins. Chuck, always nice to get some time with you here. I know big event down there, uh, I believe, in, in Miami. What exactly did you announce and why is it so important to investors? Well, first of all, Brian, it's great to see you and thanks for having me on. Uh, we had a we've had a great few days with our partners. You know, we have been a partner led company for a very long time. And this week we made uh, well, last week, actually, we made a lot of announcements around AI in our WebEx and our collaboration portfolio. This this week, we talked about a lot of AI announcements in, in our security portfolio. We announced new security suites that you just pointed out around user, cloud, and breach. Uh, this follows on a lot of announcements earlier this year around an extended detection and response platform that has got great momentum as, uh, as we've rolled it out, uh, as well as uh, multi-cloud defense. And, uh, and then you reference a Splunk acquisition, which we think will be a big play for us in security. So it's been a, uh, it's been a good few months. It's been a busy few months, uh, Chuck, that much is for sure. Uh, I think you put out a study ahead of this or in relation to this, uh, these new announcements. 70% of companies aren't prepared, prepared for the AI revolution. Uh, that has to worry, you know? Well, it's, it's an opportunity to help, uh, honestly. It's, uh, we, we did a, an AI readiness survey. We've done this with cybersecurity for years and we replicated it around AI. And I think that uh, what it just shows is what you would probably expect at this point. Customers are digesting all the new AI capabilities and the tools. Uh, they're trying to build their strategy right now. We happen to be in the technology industry, so we've been using predictive AI for a very long time. So the move to generative AI wasn't as big a jump. But I think that customers uh, will be looking at how they use uh, AI internally to make themselves more efficient, how they use AI to engage with their customers more effectively. It'll represent an infrastructure opportunity for us as well as just guiding them. And, and it introduces a lot of security uh, needs and uh, things that they'll need to be thinking about on that front as well. I know Chuck, uh, Cisco has been in, under your leadership really focused on uh, driving recurring revenue. Do these AI products facilitate that? Do they improve your margins and are they all uh, pretty much fee-based? Well, most it, it depends. Some of our some of our technology are simply like new capabilities within the security portfolio or new capabilities within WebEx. So if you have an AI assistant in our collaboration portfolio that is is going to give you a natural language uh, interface to check on what occurred in a meeting that you were 10 minutes late for. I mean, those are just incremental features that increase the value of the platform. In other cases, we sell a lot of infrastructure uh, that will help our customers build out their own AI, AI capabilities. In many cases, there'll be subscriptions associated with that. So it's going to vary across the portfolio. Speaking of, uh, I guess, just uh, efficiencies, Chuck, recently Splunk said it was becoming more efficient, had some headcount reductions there. Was that planned? And, and are you now getting a more efficient operation when this deal ultimately closes? Yeah, this is a, you know, Gary Steele has just done an amazing job with Splunk since he took over as CEO. And the, all of the changes that you've seen were things that he had planned. Uh, and uh, those were decisions that he had made. And I think obviously uh, we ha they, where they are today versus where they were two years ago, I think is completely different. And he continues to just do the things that he felt like he needed to do to run the company. And, and I support him 100%. Are you still on track with the uh, closing date? Well, obviously, we have to get through the approval cycle, which uh, we're, you know, we're working with them in any way we can. And uh, we've said next summer to, you know, nine to 12 months is what we said when we did the announcement. And uh, we don't ha we haven't heard anything that would lead us to a different uh, uh, belief at this point, Brian. Fair enough. Uh, we're just coming off, Chuck, our big uh, Yahoo Finance Invest conference. Talked to a lot of great leaders such as yourself. Um, there was a little bit of caution in the air as we round into next year. Some folks said the consumer is doing well, others are starting to see a pullback. From your vantage point, what are you seeing? Well, we're in our blackout period right now, so I will uh, probably won't give a whole lot of color around it, except to say that there are a lot of dynamics in the world, obviously. Uh, there are, uh, uh, we've got the interest rate pressure, you've got uh, this, this emerging 
assessment of what's happening with the consumer. We've got geopolitical dynamics that have existed for a while. We obviously have uh, you know, war in the Middle East, war in Europe. And so there's a lot of unknowns, and I think uh, we're just going to have to see how the next few months play out. Have you, what's your, in these times where there's a lot of focus on geopolitical tensions in the U.S. and, of course, overseas, what has been your message yeah. to employees, and, and has it changed how you lead the company? Well, I don't think that's new. We've had a, a, a lot of issues going on around the world and in society for the last seven or eight years that our employees have expected us to address with them. Uh, you know, we take uh, we take positions on those things that are important to our company or are just, uh, you know, incredibly moral lines that we don't believe should be crossed. Uh, in many cases, some of the issues are uh, are very political, are very emotional, and so we try to support our employees on all sides of those issues. And so we've been doing this for a while, and we we continue to engage and talk to our employees about the things that they want to talk about. All right, well, uh, leave it there. Always great to get some time with you. Hope to continue this conversation. And Davos is going to be in a few yeah. weeks. Chuck, we'll bring out those uh, really really heavy Parkers. Chuck Robbins, Chairman and CEO of Cisco. <laughs> Good to see Look you. forward to seeing you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.